and then we'll take it from there. Sounds good. All right. Jay, welcome, sir. Um, our guest today for the success series is Jay Corey. Um, uh, I'm going to, I am not as, as close to you as I am with a, a lot of the other agents because you, first of all, you started at a different office. Um, mm -hmm. You ultimately came to Roswell um, and joined Mike Price's team and, and quickly became uh, the, one of the top buyer's agents in the office and certainly his top buyer's agent. Um, and had a, a, a super amount of success and I think built a, a, a pretty impressive resume and, and book of business and skill set. Um, and then recently, um, you have uh, moved off of the team and um, are really in the building or rebuilding stages of, of your own business, um, which is super exciting for, for us being entrepreneurs. Um, so, what I'd love to do is, you know, I, I've only spent a, a limited amount of time um, with you, but I've always kind of watched you from afar and have been super impressed. I, I was in the room, uh, you know, when, when you were coming to Roswell and you were um, interviewing for, for Mike's team and yeah. um, spent a, a good amount of time helping him build that. And um, I was just super impressed from, from day one uh, with you, Jay, um, from the way you approach the business to... Um, your commitment level with the way you, you uh, prospect and uh, the way you serve your clients. Um, so I've, I've had you on my uh, 411 for a while. Um, you're, I, I've got you and like two other people who I've been trying to get on the calendar for a couple of months and um, hadn't tough, seen in a while. Tough so. to pin me down, I apologize. Yeah, you're a tough man to, to pin down. Um, but you are here, and uh, I, I want to welcome Jay to the group. Um, thank you in advance for, uh, for this hour of your time. Um, the, the participants here today are, for the most, yeah, pretty much all relatively new agents. Some have been in the business for as long as uh, close to a year. Um, the majority have been in the business for, let's say, uh, six months or less. And um, my, my goal for today is I'd love to just hear a little bit more about uh, your, your, your prior work experience, kind of what you did maybe prior to real estate. Give us a little, um, you know, let's take a minute to introduce yourself, if you would. Um, you know, share a little bit about your, your journey to the seat you're in now. And um, I'll probably just, you know, kind of guide you a little bit with some questions. Uh, if anyone has any questions they want to shout out, please do so. And we'll, we'll keep a couple minutes at the end to uh, just go in some more detail. Um, so Jay, I've been I told you this and, uh, yesterday and I told, I've been telling everyone this for a long time, which is, you know, everyone's going to run their business a little differently, right? There's no like right way to do it or wrong way to do it. If you like calling strangers, you can do that. If you don't like calling strangers, you don't have to, right? It's just a matter of what do you do on a daily basis? to uh, get into a relationship with more people and to become a smarter um, agent, right? A better, well-rounded agent. And so- I've kind, of, I've kind of been, since I was on two teams and on my own, I've kind of done a little bit of everything. So- uh, That's an interesting- See what, see what works for me and see what didn't. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get into that. Beautiful. So uh, why don't you go ahead and get started? I actually forgot that you were on- um, um, Anastasia. Yeah, Gina's team up in Alpharetta. Okay, cool. So uh, talk to us a little bit about your, your world prior to real estate. So I had a background in construction. Um, when I was 20, I left to move to Orlando for Michigan. I'm originally from Michigan. Um, I got into the steel business, so I was an iron worker. Um, not the easiest work in the world, but we worked a ton of hours. I did that for about 10 years. I traveled the country, um, lived in about eight, eight, eight states. Um, project to project. I just traveled and traveled and traveled. Um, real estate was always my passion. I grew up, my dad had a contracting business. He owned a Remax, um, a very big Remax. He brought it to um, the city that I lived in. Um, they do real estate still to this day. So real estate was always my passion. Construction was another passion of mine. I went the construction route just because I had a job offer in Orlando and I decided, you know, school wasn't for me and I wanted to get into the trades and go do that. Um, when I started traveling, I started making, you know, pretty good money in the industry. I started moving up very quickly. Uh, I always wanted to get out and do real estate, but I couldn't leave the construction business at the time. So I traveled and traveled and traveled. It was really good to me. It was really fun. 
Uh, I'm 33 now. When I got to about 29, I wanted to really, you know, shut things down and stop moving every year um, and find a place. And I thought that was the time. Uh, I had a connection here in Atlanta um, who was in real estate. And when I was talking to her, she, you know, gave me a big thing, said, let's come on over here. We got a lot of work. Uh, I think it'd be great for you. And I said, look, I've always been wanting to get into real estate. I'm leaving my job for this. I'm moving to a state that I've never been to with, I don't have anybody here. Uh, I was making $150,000. So it wasn't like a, a very easy, when you're making that money, it's not a very easy thing to say, all right, I'm going to walk away from this and I'm going to go do something new. Right. Uh, I took the jump because I wanted to move to Atlanta. None of that worked out. Everything that, um, you know, we had planned every, my, my vision of what was here in Atlanta um, with that, with that company did not work out. So here I am in Atlanta, leaving my job, not knowing anybody. I don't know the real estate industry. I took my class in Houston while I was working um, construction. As soon as I moved here, I took my tests pass the tests and real estate was there, but everything that, you know, I had moved here for kind of crumbled. Uh, so it was more so like, what do I do? Um, I searched around, I found Keller Williams, North Atlanta. I loved Aubrey. Um, Aubrey was a big factor in what I did. So I went over to Keller Williams, uh, North Atlanta, talked to Aubrey, got hooked up there. Um, kind of started my real estate career there. I went to, you know, every single class you could go to just because I didn't know I had a background in, in construction and real estate, but not on the sales side. So I did a lot of investments and that type of stuff. I grew up around it. So I knew real estate in general, but I wasn't, you know, versed in as far as a sales, a sales agent. It's, it's such a big difference, you know, being on the oh, side, yeah. being on this side of it. So, um, I just went to every class you could think of and I was always in the office and I was always talking to people, uh, learning and learning and learning. Um, Gina Sharma approached me um, and asked if I would want to join her team. Uh, I sat down with her. I listened to the splits. Money didn't make sense, but the knowledge did. Uh, and I'm a big believer in paying for, you, you, know, you can stop me if that's what you yeah, want let me, to let me, let me interject something right now. So Gina is one of the top agents in North Atlanta. Okay, yes. she's part of the, um, uh, she's now part of Bob Lucido's team. Who Bob is the number two agent in all of Keller Williams. Jay would never have gotten a tap on the shoulder from that type of caliber agent had he not been impressive, mm -hmm. right? So the yeah, I mean, being in the go office in and and do the work so others can watch you do the work, and then all the opportunities come your way. So all right, keep going. Yeah, so I was you know I was in the office every day. I was going to every class. I got all whatever those awards were. Is the uh, I can't even remember what student it was. Student of the year. Student student of the month every every single month because I went to every single class because I had nothing else to do because I had no business. Right. Um, I took Ignite, which was really nice. Um, but at that point, it was let me find someone who I can learn from. Uh, I didn't know if if I knew people here, it would be a lot different. I just I had nobody, so I moved here with no. Everyone's like, we'll call your sphere. That was the biggest thing in every class, start with your sphere, start with this. And I had nothing. So I had nobody here. Uh, so at that point it was like, Gina came to me, kind of talked to me like, are you interested? When I broke down the money, you know, I'm, I'm big on money and I broke it down. I'm like, God, you're giving up a lot, but you know, where's, where's the knowledge, you know, and I'm all for, I've always believed in paying for, you know, trade off money for knowledge. Cause in the end, knowledge is always going to win. The experience is going to win and you're going to make more money. Um, so it's a long-term game, especially, you know, where you guys are at in your industry or in the, you know, one year in. Um, so I joined her. I didn't make a paycheck for six months, not with Gina, but I didn't start with Gina. Um, six months in, I, I hadn't made a paycheck. So it was a, uh, it was a tough grind, um, especially leaving a job doing what I was doing and then coming here and not making any money. Uh, so I joined Gina. I learned a ton, got a lot of reps in as far as calling leads. Um, we were big on Zillow and realtor.com type stuff, sync leads. So there was a, an abundant amount of leads coming in to where even if they weren't good leads, you were still getting reps on the phone. You were kind of learning the, the process of prospecting. Um, I was going on appointments. I was doing all that stuff 
things that I wasn't doing on my own. So I may have been going on one or two appointments on my own, but now I'm going on 10, you know, I'm going on 10 appointments. So you're 10 times, you know, you're five times what you would be doing um, on your own. Uh, I closed probably 12 deals with Gina, um, but got a lot of reps in. So I wasn't making a lot of money. Uh, things just didn't work out. I love Gina. She's a great agent. Um, nothing against her. But, you know, sometimes you're just not in the right place. It's just not it for you. Um, so her and I decided to part ways. I went back out on my own. Um, and to make it a shorter story, so Gina's assistant had left her and went to Mike Price. She reached out to me and said, hey, Mike, Mike's looking for someone. I think you'd be a great fit. I'm like, I'm not interested in joining a team. Like, I want to be on my own. I just want to start my own stuff. Uh, you know, I feel that I have the knowledge now. Um, I was a little naive because I was only a year and year and a half in maybe. And I'm like, yeah, I know everything. Let's, I can do this on my own. Uh, but then I went, I said, look, I'll just talk to him. I'm not interested, but I'll talk to him. Um, we hit it off at the time. Everything was good. Um, I said, yeah, let's, let's do this. Like everyone had left his team and he had a lot of, you know, he had a lot of leads coming in. It was just me. It was like kind of a perfect, perfect storm. Exactly what I was looking for. Um, so I said, all right, let's do it. Mike's really big on cold calling. Um, and I, I'm okay with that. I don't like it, but I'm good on the phones. I can talk to people. I have no, I'm not scared to talk to people. I'm fluent. I read the scripts. I can do all that stuff. That's not a problem for me. So his model was, okay, I'll do that. If you, if you can promise me this by doing this, then let's do it. Um, so that's what we did. We hammered the phones for the first three months, two months on his team. We were just every day, all day long, calling leads from three years ago. It didn't matter. He just wanted me to get reps in with the scripts, um, which was really good. Let me, let me interject one second. You use the word reps on the phone. I know what you mean. I just want you to go into a tiny bit more detail. Like, why is that? One of the, one of the things that, that I, I um, speak a lot about is this is a volume business, right? I, I wish it wasn't necessarily that way, but the more experience you get having conversations with humans about the real estate world, the more confident you're going to be and the more comfortable you're going to be. So wh what did you learn from all these reps that you were putting in? Well, you hear something different from everybody, right? So you can say the same things, but there's always going to be different answers on the other side. So once you start getting in those that repetition, you start being able to be more fluent when someone asks you a question that kind of throws you off. You can read a script, but in my opinion, you're never going to get it's like when you when you script play with someone, it's, hey, this is Jay Corey. I saw that you're interested in purchasing a house. Oh, yes, that's great. I am. Well, when are you ready to move? Oh, right now. Like, it doesn't go that way. You know, it does. It just doesn't go the way that the, the script practice goes. So when you actually get real people on the phone, that's when you get your true experience. And you start to learn, you know, what to say very quickly because you don't want to, when you hear something and you don't really know how to respond, and you're sitting there thinking it, it doesn't go well. You want to be able to smoothly talk on the phone and answer questions. And when they got a rebuttal, you can rebuttal back to them. Um, so like how those repetitions. How did you get really good? Did you just say them to yourself in, in, the, in a dark room? Or like, did you role play all day with Mike? Like, how did you get good? So we would role play a little bit. But to be honest with you, um, I do feel like I have, a, for me, it comes natural as far as like, being able to speak and to and to come up with stuff quickly, I'm pretty witty and I can I can make things happen. Um, but as far as the scripts goes, like yeah, I did follow scripts. I did do that. We would talk about like, hey, I'd get on the phone and I'd screw up and I'd be like, oh, shit, and I'd hang up. Sorry if I can't say that. That's um, okay. You're it's it's immortalized on my YouTube page forever, but it's all good. Okay. I just well, show this one to my yeah. Cross, to cross me off. I'll, I'll I'll keep my sailors and all to myself. No, anyway, probably so a couple I, of those that I've dropped in here. It's all good. So I said, darn, and I hung up the phone. Um, and then Mike would poke it. <laughs> Mike would <laughs> Mike would poke his head in and say, what happened? And I said, I don't know. And he said, all right, let's talk about it. So, um, you know, I give Mike a lot of credit for, you know, kind of pushing that. And I would do the same for him because he would be on the phone. And Mike's very fluent, but he would screw up too. And I'd come in and be like, geez, you really blew that one. Right. You know, and, and so we would give, we would kind of have that relationship and, um, it was a lot of screwing up at first because I had never, even on Gina's team, I, I wasn't doing 
that type of level of calling. Um, so we did that. I was getting a lot of leads, Zillow leads and all that type of stuff. Um, so it was just a consistent being on the phone um, with him. And then, you know, being on the phone is one thing, but converting leads are another thing. Uh, you can talk to a hundred leads, but if you can't set appointments, that's doesn't even matter. Um, so that's kind of like how we did it with, you know, with Mike, it was, there was a lot of phone calls. We had a lot of leads coming in. So it was a lot of, I was on the road all the time. Um, just so you guys know, I closed about 39 deals with Mike. Um, me personally, a little over 12 and a half, a little over 12 million in volume. Um, so we did really well. I was on the road consistently. I was on the phone consistently. It was, a. Uh, and was you were the top time. buyer's agent, what, year before last or last year? 2019, I was top buyer's agent for right. Delaware. Yeah, yeah. So that was the year that I worked for Mike. I had a full year with him in 2019. So, so let's just, let, let's, um, let's put that into perspective for a second. So um, I want to, I want to talk a, a decent amount and, and I'll, I'll be honest with, with you guys. I, I, Jay and I, Jay and I have not, I've not prepped Jay for anything. Um, I'm, I'm not asking him to deliver a certain message to you. I'm just asking him to share his story, right? So what he says, I may not perfectly agree with, and that's totally cool. I invited him here to share his story, not for him to share my story, right? Well, and I, I think I told you from the beginning that I'm a little unconventional. So it's, it's not, a it's not always everything that they tell you is what I'm doing and, but what I'm doing is working. So I don't, uh. And I think some of the things that they they are telling you to do and Bill will tell you to do is, you know, I do need to add that into because uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not 100 percent right now. I could maximize. And I think there's some things that they will tell you to do that I should be doing, too. So, right. Both so, ways. so somebody might say, well, should I should I join a team? And here's here's my stock answer. OK, um, I, I want you to hear something, though. Jay, Jay was willing to trade profit for education and experience and reps or at bats is what I, what I usually call it, right? Now, um, not every team is the same. He's been on two teams. He's described two very different ways of finding appointments, right? <clears throat> now, the important thing is if somebody says, if, if, if you have an opportunity to join a team and your first question is what's the split, that's the wrong first question. The first question should be, what's the opportunity, right? If I give you 70% of each transaction, but I only give you four leads all year, that's not going to be helpful, right? If I give you 45% of each transaction, but you are literally going from appointment to appointment to appointment to appointment, and you can make 200 grand, then, and there's lots of opportunity coming, then that's the important thing is what's the opportunity? What's my, what is the trade-off for the money, amount of money you want to pay me for the type of work you want me to do, right? Yeah. And yeah. so what my, what my um, uh, and it kind of follows your story a little bit, Jay, honestly, is I say, should you join a team right at the beginning? I personally don't think you should, right? Because a lot of us, I mean, almost all of us for that matter, um, we got into the business because we want this, this thing we call quality of life, right? We want, you know, great income. We want to do great things with our family. We want to do our hobbies. We want to work with who we want to work with, when we want to work with them, that kind of thing, right? And we want to be in charge and control our time. The second you go join a team, they have control over your time. And the trade-off is you're learning a lot of things and somebody else is telling you where to go and who to meet with, right? And there might be some stages of your career where that's appealing and some stages where that's not particularly appealing. My advice is you go in there and you crush the work that you're supposed to do, right? You learn the tech, you learn the systems, you learn the contracts, all of that, and you get noticed. And then somebody like Gina comes along and says, hey, hey, you look to be pretty impressive here, Jay, on an opportunity, right? And Mike Price comes along and says, hey, you look pretty impressive over there, Jay, you're doing awesome. Would you like to work with me? right? And then you get your pick of the litter and you can determine at what stage you're willing to enter into an agreement like that. If I were to say uh, to you, Jay, you know, what should you be looking for in a team or what's your, what's your take on teams? What's your philosophy on it? What, what would you share with me? 
so I'm going to be, and you've, you've sat in the meetings when we drill people and I'm very, <laughs> very upfront on what I yeah. think. And like, if you're looking for a team first, first off, it depends on, I mean, obviously, you know, you want to hear the, the answer of culture. Are you going to fit in with a team? That's, that's just obvious. So you're going to fit in with the people that you're working with, because if you're not, uh, it just won't work out anyway. You don't want to be around a bunch of people that you just don't enjoy being around. Uh, secondly, does for me personally, when I was looking, does the team have enough to support me? Um, I mean, that's very important. You know, it, how many deals did you do last year? You did 50 deals, you have five agents. That means you're going to do 10 deals at a 50% split. How much money is that? So that's, I look at all that type of stuff. I look at their numbers. I look at the, you know, who they have on their team. I look at, you know, how they run their team. Yeah. Are they following the model? Do they, are they following the model? Do they have the systems? What are they going to provide me? Because you're giving them a big percentage of your split. Are you providing me with the systems? Are you going to teach me? For me, it was biggest. Are you going to be a mentor to me as well? Yeah. Like, are you there for me? Um, if I have a question or are you just a team leader who is see, here are, the, here are the leads that are coming in and just handle them. And if you have a question, I'm too busy for you. Um, right. It's you know, like, I'm paying for a bunch of stuff. Show me yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the most important thing to me is, it, can I, do I have to call somebody else or can I call someone on my team to answer those type of questions? Cause you're going to have questions and you're going to run into things that you want answers. And for me, that's what the team is there for. Yeah. Um, lead, leads are important. Um, Obviously, you want to bring your own leads and you want to do all that stuff. But if you're bringing your own leads and you're not getting leads, then why are you on a team, essentially? Uh, that's my philosophy on that. Um, but, yeah, the mentorship, I'm OK with giving up. I was OK with giving up, you know, the, the amount of money as long as I was learning, as long as I was growing, as long as people were teaching me. I've always thought that, OK, so I joined the team. I did 39 deals last year okay, I could have did 15 or 20 on my own and made the same amount of money, but I learned 20, I learned double what I would have done because every deal is different. I ran into 20 different situations and yeah. I learned so much more. Maybe I did 12 deals, you know, that year. So I would have did, you know, 18, nine or 22 more. So to me, it was more about in the beginning, just learning, getting it, like I trusted myself that I was going to learn this industry and that I was going to be good at it and all that. So I, I had the confidence in, in that. It was just let me find someone to learn from. And if it works out, great. You know, I, I never joined a team thinking I'm just going to steal everything that I can and then leave. Like that wasn't it. But it was let's soak that up in case this isn't the one. What did I gain from it? Because you never want to join a team and then all of a sudden you leave and you're like, well, I didn't make any money. I didn't learn anything. And here I am three, four months later looking for another team. Well, so that's I, kind of, go ahead. I, I was going to say like, when you join a team though, it's not just what you can provide to the team. It's what the team can provide to you. And as yeah. the, the partner and the leader at like, at the end of the day, everyone is looking for the next step, right? It's yeah. how am I going to grow? What's next for me? You know, if it's an increase in your income or an increase in your authority or responsibility, we're all looking to that next step. And the leader, and, and this is by no means a, a, a commentary on Gina or Mike, but the, the leader has to make sure that they are building an organization that is big enough and provides enough of the resources for all of their hugely talented people to continue to get what they desire within their world. Cause if they don't, they're going to leave their world. Yeah. Yeah. And once you get to a certain level, it's, you don't, if, if there's nothing to continue forward, then what is, I don't want to, I don't want to work the next year to make the same amount of money. That's not my goal. My goal is to always continuously grow my business and make more money. Right. I don't want to, I don't want to work harder to make the same amount of money. I want to work, harder to increase my my profitability um, i love it so um go, go ahead i'm sorry um what was i gonna say any, any, any thoughts or questions anything you've heard that you want a little bit more detail about guys 
All right, so feel free to start thinking about your questions. If you want to type them into the chat, we can um, I can help kind of facilitate that. So so Jay, talk to me about um, what, like what's going on now. So you you you're a solo agent again. I assume you've kind of got you've been mulling over like you know kind of how do I make this my own? Like how you know you, I know you're an entrepreneur at heart, a business mm -hmm. owner at heart. Um, Walk me through kind of what the last, you know, six, eight months have been like since you since you separated from Mike and, you know, COVID hit and all this, like, what yeah. are you working on right now? So, yeah, so interesting. Um, so, like, somewhere around February, I kind of made the decision, like, hey, you know, I was, I was getting to a point where there was a lot of, like, I was just going out and doing my stuff. I was closing my deals. I didn't have many questions. It was, you know, I was very confident in my ability to do things. I just didn't need that help. And I was bringing checks back to the team and I was splitting that. And I, you know, I, I just wasn't, I didn't, I didn't feel that I felt that I could go out on my own without, you know, any, any worries. Um, I had an investor that was, does a lot of stuff that, you know, was kind of my backbone, which gave me the ability to take off. Um, I had a lot of people coming in and, you know, I was starting to get those calls. Hey Jay, I want to buy a house. Like I heard you're, doing very well and these were my friends so my sphere was finally starting like I had built that sphere and it was finally starting to you know kind of roll in um so that's when I made the decision like hey do I want to go out and do this now's the time I made a very good living in 2019 I have you know plenty of money to support myself um if leads are all I'm getting on the team I can provide those leads for myself I can pay for those because I'm confident you know, I'm closing them myself, then why can't I purchase them myself and close them myself? So I had a big plan, um, you know, big marketing plan, a big spend plan, all that type of stuff. And then COVID hit. Um, I left in March, early, like the first week of March with Mike and went out on my own. And then the couple of weeks later, COVID hit yeah. and I stopped any sort of like, you know, spending or anything like that, that I was going to do. I didn't want to, I didn't want to push a marketing campaign or do any of that type of stuff because I just didn't know you know, where things were going to go. Um, luckily enough, I had, I did very well during COVID for the first couple of months. I had buyers that were ready to go. Interest rates were still low. We closed, I mean, I think I closed seven or eight deals during April, May. Um, so I did well. Um, my investor was still doing some houses. So I was surviving um, kind of fast forward because that was kind of like a lull time. Um, really wasn't much going on. I wasn't doing much as far as like following up with the leads that I had that were ready to go. Um, a lot of people were kind of just sitting back at that time. So it wasn't, I wasn't chasing, you know, new leads. Um, now I'm kind of going into, um, my focus is really rebranding right now. So I've been really focusing on my sphere and rebranding like who I am as an agent. Um, I'm working with a company and building website logos really going to go start going hard on like Instagram and social media. Um, that's kind of more of where I'm going to start pushing, um, less cold calls, less type stuff like that. It's going to be more, you know, branding, putting my name out there. I live at the battery, which has been very, very good to me. So I'm branding this, um, as the agent of the battery, um, nice. I'm trying to get, um, you know, I closed on my neighbor's house the other day. I got another neighbor. So a lot of move outs here. Um, you know, I'm kind of in a good area to where this is their last, you know, this, this apartment complex is kind of their last stop. You know, there's yeah. nowhere else to go after this place is normally they move out and new house. So I'm focusing a lot targeting here, um, doing that stuff, taking clients out, like past clients out to launch. Like today I have at four o'clock, I'm meeting, you know, a client that I closed on a year ago. We became friends. And every time I meet with them, they're like, hey, so-and-so wants to buy a house. So it's just that type of stuff. I'm more of an in-person guy. I'm a connection guy. Um, I built a connection with an investor who does about 60 flips a year. Um, I just recently finally got in like completely with him. So um, he used to use Duffy and we had a very hard conversation about, hey, why are you using them when you can use someone you know, that's gonna give you full service? So he finally had let me do that. So he's given me, you know, a lot of deals. I've done about six deals with him this year. I have one coming up on the market tomorrow. I have two more coming up in the next couple of weeks, but he does 60 a year. So if I can get about 15 or 20 a year from him, 
wow. you know, things will be very well. So, yeah. so that's kind of in a nutshell, like where I, where I'm going with my business. Beautiful. So I got a couple of questions for you. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. Yeah. Um, when you say you're rebranding, like who you are as an agent, who are you as an agent? So I'm trying to keep more of a, I'm trying, I mean, my, my end goal is to tap into a luxury market. Um, I mean, that's just the end goal. That's, that's what I want to be. That's what I want to be as an agent. I don't want to lose the $300,000 because that's, you know, that's your life support. Um, but as far as branding, just, I want to make it real clean. I want to make everything very similar to where it's all the same. Everything you see from me is going to be the exact same. Um, I'm going to do videos. I'm going to do all that type of stuff. Um, you know, just kind of, sh just kind of show. So when you see it, it's all the same. And I, and that's kind of the, the goal of what I'm going for. Okay, um, cool. Um, what is one thing you would recommend to new agents to set and realize a quote, realistic, but high achievable goal for the first year? Oh gosh, it's a tough one for me because my first year was horrible. <clears throat> Um, I mean, I made 20 grand my first year, first six months, I didn't make a dollar. Um, so I'm not saying, pretend, I'm not, but, pretend it says second year, second year. <laughs> God, I did bad second year too. <laughs> <laughs> I learned a lot my second year, but I think I made 40 or 50,000. So what's your advice for a new agent? What should they be thinking about on a daily basis? Learn everything you can learn. Um, get with someone me, me personally, I say get with, go to the classes, do what you got to do, but getting with a team is important. Getting with the right team is important. Um, I just think it's very tough as a new agent to get out there because you just have so many questions. I remember when I was a new agent and I had a really good real estate background, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to fill out a contract. I didn't know when they asked me what to do here. I didn't know that. I didn't know about home warranties. I didn't know about writing in the termite. I didn't know how to negotiate deals. Like it was just a complete, you just didn't get that because you never had those repetitions. Right. Um, when you get with the team, it's, you know, you, you, you really start to get more and more and more and more. And you, even if those deals are not going through, you're still living real life situations and you're learning um, and soak that in. And then when you're kind of, when you feel that you're ready, then you can do what you want from there. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, this is not a sales pitch to anybody, um, but this is kind of a, like they say the productivity coach is the, is the team leader of the largest team at the office. Okay. It's a little different team because the fee is a little, is it significantly less than the fee to be on a team, but the offering package is, is less, right? So generally you're not getting the leads without paying for or the leads and generally you're not getting the administrative support right but you're instead of paying 50 percent or sometimes now 60 percent you're paying 10 percent so that leaves you the cushion to go hire a contract close person if you want it right so it's it's just the kind of what what are you most interested it's almost like a stepping not a stepping stone but it's it's a different variation of the of a team right so you're not necessarily committed to getting your admin services or marketing services done by the person who was hired by your team owner and you're not obligated to work somebody else's leads for a fee that sometimes people say is expensive right do you, do you agree with that jay so yeah so i mean i actually wasn't even thinking so getting in the productivity coaching maybe off the rip because then you have someone to kind of lead you you can actually give yourself a shot on you know can i make this on my own because you, you very well could me personally I had nobody here, so I could, I, I just, I didn't know what to do. I was just stuck. Um, but productivity coaching would be good to, you know, a good stepping stone, like you said, learn, learn from them. And then if you do want to join a team because you're not getting those deals, um, then you go that route and you start getting the, the leads that are coming in. So yeah, right. I, I agree. I agree. And that's, that. an, that's another service that um, I think I've very briefly mentioned to you guys. Um, that probably in, it'll probably be in place by the end of the year. We're we're kind of beta testing it right now um, behind the scenes, which is um, essentially finding online leads largely through um, for sale by owners, expired listings, and withdrawn calls, and Facebook ads through command 
incubating those lead leads and then booking appointments and then handing off the appointment to you guys. And then that would be, you'd, you'd be eligible because you're in PC, non-PC people would not be eligible for this. There would be a fee for the lead, of course, when it closes, but it would be less than you would typically pay on a team. So um, again, we're, and we're also looking to start Georgia Legacy Group Leverage, which will be able to handle a lot of the administrative and marketing support that you would be getting from a team. So we're not doing all this to compete with the team, but what we know <clears throat> is just a different option and it allows you to still be in the driver's seat of your organization and have the freedom of your time and your schedule, yet not have to um, necessarily help build somebody else's empire if, you, if that's not the direction you wanna go. Is that fair to say? So Jay, what's your goal for next year? Um, I'm actually meeting with Aubrey um, Monday at one o'clock to discuss that. Um, GCI wise is 300,000. So I need to break that down backwards to see what I need to do to really accomplish that. Um, I have some plans in mind and all that type of stuff, but I'm gonna sit down on uh, Monday with Aubrey and kind of really just dig in and go, go, go backwards on, you know, this yeah. is what I wanna make. Um, how do we get there? Beautiful. So, but yeah, GCI wise, that's 300,000 is where I want to be. And, um, you know, 300,000, if your typical price range, you're, you're, excuse me, you're, you're probably going to want some help, right? Yeah. Who are you going to hire? Well, I'm not going to hire anyone except for uh, an assistant. Yeah. If I, if, if I start doing that business, um, the good thing about last year is, you know, doing 39 deals, i you know, I'm making a couple hundred thousand. I proved that I could do that. Um, yeah, of course. A lot of that, a lot of that was on my own. We had a, ver we did have an assistant, um, it, that a transaction coordinator, I would say that handled, you know, my deals, which, you know, I, that's who I would hire as a transaction coordinator. Right. Um, but, you know, it was good to me to prove that I could actually handle that, that workload. Um, mm -hmm. so if I did that on my own, I can handle that workload. So if I can, and, in my opinion, I can close 45 to 50 deals on my own with a team. With, with, with with a transaction coordinator or assistant, whatever you want to go. Oh yeah, for sure so, with an assistant, but yeah, without without an assistant, not a team. No, no, without an assistant, I can't do all that. Um, but with an assistant or transaction coordinator in general, that's going to handle a lot of stuff. So e either or. Um, so I think that's my max. So I wouldn't even be interested in bringing anyone on because. You know, this, this is my life. Unfortunately, I like, you know, not unfortunately, I mean, I love it, but this is what I have. I, you know, no kids, no wife, um, right. real estate, real estate is my entire world. So right. I'm, uh, I'm all for working until, you know, until something happens and I need to settle down, then I can hire a buyer's agent and I can kind of scale back. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, I want every dollar I can get. So <laughs> I know. I, I mean, you're, you have clarity of your plan, which is, the most important thing. So um, what about on a on a day-to-day -day basis? What do you think are the critical day-to-day -day tasks that a real estate agent does in your opinion? I mean, day-to-day -day is tough. So I was I was talking to a couple people um, about this, about just about the industry in general. It's like every single day you have to wake up and find your next dollar. And that's scary for some people because nobody, you just don't get many people. You're not waking up to your phone calling and saying, Hey, can, you want to sell my house? Do you want to sell my house? Do you want to sell my house? Yeah. Every maybe now and again, you get that because you're going to get some referrals, but not enough to survive on. Um, right. So it's just kind of making a plan and, you know, waking up and actually doing, doing the work. Um, for me, it's more surrounding myself with like, it's been very tough because now I work from home, but I like to surround myself with other successful people. And I've been doing that more and more because just being around them, it makes you work harder, uh, yeah. makes you come home. And it, that's been a key for me. So I like to meet with people who are doing things at a high level, at least once a week. And that way you kind of get pumped up in the week. They give you some ideas. You go implement them. Um, right now for me, I'm doing a lot of stuff as far as like, like I said, my rebranding. So I'm, I'm working on my websites. I'm working on my Instagrams. I'm working on my Facebooks. I'm, I'm not there yet, but I'm just started. Um, I think that's going to be big. Social media is big in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I've hired some people to do a lot of things and spending some money and getting that part out of the way. Um, 
and yeah, that's it. Finding, I do a lot of stuff as far as finding my investor. I need to find deals. If I can find deals for him, he'll buy them all day long. So it's a, you know, that's a consistent hunt for me is, you know, find me a deal because if I can find him five deals that he buys, that means 10 deals because I get the back end and the front end. Yeah. So those are, those are big deals for me. Um, they can really make or break your business because he has unlimited funds as far as purchasing property. Yeah. What if I find 10 houses today, he's buying them. You, you, it's very obvious that you have studied business, right? You, you speak mm -hmm. in a very, um, in a, in a very business-like way. You're not uncomfortable with speaking about numbers and conversion ratios and these kind of things. Like, you, you understand that this business is all about at bats. Did, did you always realize that? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like everything else. You just, the more you do, the more you're going to get. I mean, it's just, it's a simple concept. So yeah, the more people you call, the more people you're going to get, the more appointments you're going to set, that type of thing. So, um, so yeah, I've kind of always realized that, you know, that that's what it is. Cool. What other questions do we have guys? Where are you finding your off-market deals for your investor? Oh God, um, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not, or I'd be uh, flying around and uh, much happier. Um, no, I have. So I've, I have some wholesalers that I work with, which are terrible. Um, it's really just like I put my name out there in Georgia Legacy Group. Um, I'm constantly, anytime I see anybody, I'm constantly on Facebook. Anytime I see something, I'm inquiring on it. Um, you know, I'm, a lot of people know that I have investor, um, you know, and, and I'm not greedy because if you bring me a deal that you're not, like, if you bring me a deal that you just found and it's not really yours, like I'm not opposed to, well, let's give it to me and I'll split my commission. You know what I mean? So I do a lot of stuff like that. I'm not greedy. We can co-op, we can do it. it. I just want, I just want the deal. Um, but yeah, dealing with wholesalers and that type of stuff, constantly scouring MLS is just tough. Anytime anything's on the MLS, it's, you know, pretty much overpriced or you have, you know, 50 investors going after it. Um, so we find some stuff on there. It's not necessarily that it's overpriced. It's that it's overpriced it's, for my investor. Right. It's not right. Exactly. So their so margins investor, are just not there for an investor who's going to flip it yet. That's what the property, that's what the market, that's what the market value is. Yeah. 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 So, um, and I, I may be wrong in saying this, but as a new agent, be very careful with investors. You're going to get a lot of investors calling you and they're a big time waste of time. Um, they will run you out. They will run you all over the place. Um, it's very tough. I've done it. Um, investors are tough because what they want you to do is they want you to, to find the house. They want you to run the numbers. They want you to pull the comps. They want you to do the whole package. And then they want you to go look at it while they run their numbers and then they want you to come back and then they want to send another contractor out there to go do it before you know it. Then they're like, ah, oh, it doesn't make sense. Let's go to the next one. You can do that 15 times before they find one. Um, right. I, I remember I had a conversation. This is way back when, when the, <clears throat> the, fir the first downturn and um, I was, I was new and I was trying to figure out what investors were all about. And they said, this guy said, find me a deal with $80,000 worth of equity. Yeah. Right. And I said, okay, great. I got a new client. Right. And then I went around and I tried to find stuff and I found something with 50,000, what I thought was about $50,000 worth of equity. And I handed, I, I shared it with him and he said, no, this isn't going to work. And at that moment, I said to myself, and this is a bit limited thinking. I'll, I'll give you that. I said to myself, wait a second. I'm hand, trying to hand this dude $50,000 on a platter in exchange for 3% of like 180. Something's wrong with this. Yeah. Right. And, um, and then I met another investor like that same week that was like, okay, my ideal buy, uh, agent is going to write offers all day long for me. And, you know, like 25 offers a, a, a week and I'll, we'll get one or two. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this doesn't sound like something I want. Yeah. Maybe get, maybe get one or two. Yeah. <laughs> I'd write 25 offers if I got one or two, but you're not going to get that because they're all low ball offers and it just doesn't make sense. So like my advice is, I mean, if you're, when you're a new agent and you get an investor, go ahead and take them because you got nothing else going on in the, in, unless you do, 
once you start getting busy, you have to start prioritizing who you're spending your time with. Right now, if I get an investor and he's like, yeah, I'm new to the game. I really just want to find something that, you know, I can make $30,000 on and I can just touch it up and throw some paint on it. Well, okay, I'm probably not going to spend too much time on you. I may just refer you and say, hey, I have someone if you want it. Because uh, I'm just too busy to, to take that on. A new investor to me is just not, they're just very tough because they don't know what they're doing. They have to call nine different contractors. You have to go out to the property a bunch of different times you know, it, it just becomes a mess. So I was very lucky to run into the guy that I have, the way we do business is, so I'll find, if I find them a house, I'll run the numbers and tell him what I think. If he likes it, he goes and sees it. He's a contractor himself. So he walks in there, he does it. Just him, he meets me, he writes all of his notes out. He goes back to the office, he runs his bid. He says, hey, offer this. And we offer a 10 day, all cash, no due diligence, close. And that's that. And it's the easiest deal ever. So if they like it, they like it. If they accept it, they don't. So as far as that goes, it's there, there's, there's no meeting five different contractors out there. There's, he's not a guy that's like looking at every little thing that they're scared of. And, you know, they see a little bow in the wall and they're like, ah, we got to back out. It's like, well, you're doing a flip. There's going to be problems that you have to understand and know how to do those. So, yeah. And to not stay on the investor thing too long, but you're going to run across them. They are, you know, I'd say 75% of them are very big time wasters for you. Um, in the beginning, go ahead and take them, take a chance. But once you start getting busy, don't let them take away from you finding, don't spend two, three days on them when you could be spending two, three days on finding, you know, a retail client who's ready to purchase now. Exactly. Exactly. Jay, I have a question. Yeah. So as a new agent and, you know, it's a lot that comes with real estate. Is that a productive way to spend our time even entertaining investors, even if we don't have a lot going on? Like I've got a couple and I'm shading the life out of them only because I've been hearing what everyone's saying. And in my opinion, I feel that a better use of my time is advancing my knowledge opposed to running over all throughout the city, you know, for a possibility. Like, so what is, what do you think about that? Like I have things going on, but it's not a whole, whole lot, I think but I don't want to entertain them either. I was going to say, I think that there's, I think there's, there's an issue with taking on every one of them, obviously. And there's, there's also a potential issue with, with rejecting all of them. Right. If, if Jay just blanketly said, I don't work with investors, then this guy that's helping him grow his business substantially wouldn't be in business with Jay. Um, I, Jay, you could probably come up with a question or two that maybe an, an agent like Ebony could ask of an, of an investor that will help them understand how experienced this guy is or this woman is. Yeah, that so that's, dictate that's what I was whether they say. invest their time in, right? That's what I was going to say is you, you really need to vet the investor. So you need to ask a lot of questions to see if it's worth your time. And then you... I mean, at the end of the day, you're going to have to prioritize is, is, is you're going to the class or doing this more important than going out and being an investor and only you can do that. But, you know, ask your investors some questions. How many deals have you done? You know, are you new to, is this your first flip? Like, do you have the, do you have the contractors and don't just ask them like, you can ask them like, Hey, do you have the contractors to do the flip? Because if you don't, I can help you find, you know, I can help connect you with those contractors. And if they say no, it's a very evident that they are not very, most people who do flips will have the whole team ready to rock and roll. Mm -hmm. So you can ask those questions as if you're coming with value, but you're really fishing for, you know, questions for them. So, you know, how many flips have you done? Is this your first flip? That's a, that's a fine question. If they say no, okay, great. Like you have contractors that are able to do all the work because if you don't, I can connect you with some great ones. And if they say no, that'd be great. I'd love your connection. Well, now you can start thinking in your head like, ah, they probably haven't done many deals. Um, and go, go entertain, go entertain one deal. When they walk through, if you can, you can, you can feel, I can, I have a construction background, so it's a lot easier for me. When I walk through and I see someone that gets scared over something that doesn't scare me, I can tell that they're just, you know, they're not going to do it's going to be very tough for them to do a deal because they're looking for 
they're looking for something they're kind of in and they're just going to patch the walls and put paint on it and those don't exist right now unfortunately right you're uh, not going to make twenty five thousand dollars by painting the walls and touching up the floor i i uh i was taught a question you, you could probably appreciate this jay like ask um you know tell me a little bit about your budget for dumpsters how much do you, how much money do you have in your budget for dumpsters? Yeah. Right. So somebody that's done a lot of flips, you know, they know every line item, right? Because the margins sometimes are thin, right? So yeah. they have to know everything. If somebody was like, oh yeah, I guess I will need a dumpster at the house. Like eh, you're done. Yeah. Well, not to contradict myself because I've closed on deals with new investors. It's just, do you want to chase, you know, do you, do you want to spend <laughs> For me, no, definitely don't chase multiple investors. Um, and if they want you to look at 15, 20 properties and go look at them by yourself and do all this due diligence and run the numbers, it's going to get very tough. So you really have to kind of prioritize what's more important to you. Is it the, and it's still good as a new agent to do that type of stuff because now you're still seeing homes, you're kind of getting the feel, you're kind of learning the investor part with them. So it's not like you're wasting your time. If they ask you to run comps on a lot of houses, well, that's still repetition on running comps and doing all that stuff. It may never turn into a deal, but you're working. If you weren't, if they didn't have you ask you to do that, you'd probably not be doing that. Exactly. Uh, so there's some there's some good that can still come out of it, um, even though you're going to end up feeling like it's a waste of time. So right. you got to yeah. take the good out of everything that you do. Um, and you're always going to learn no matter what you're doing you're learning especially in the beginning whether you're going to show a house that someone's not pre-approved you find out they're not pre-approved well you still were able to walk through that house you're able to talk to them you're able to get questions because everyone has different questions um you learn something from that it sucks because you didn't get a deal from it and you wasted your time but at this point in the career like that's what happens you have time you have time to waste unfortunately um, I mean, no one has time to waste. I don't want to put it like that, but you learn something from that and you didn't lose anything from, you didn't give up anything to learn that section, if that makes sense. Right. Like I took that, that approach when I was, I worked with a lot of renters at the beginning of my business and yeah. Um, and what I, what I found was if, uh, yeah, I wasn't making that much money, but what I was doing was I was putting a lot of people in my database. I was seeing a lot of property and I was getting a lot of it backs. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Jay, we've been talking about a uh, fail, not failure necessarily, but you know, every day just doesn't feel like a series of like wins and high fives. Right. But what, when you get a lot of reps or a lot of it bats that that's coupled oftentimes with a lot of rejection. Um, mm -hmm. How did you, how do you handle that? What, what's your mindset around that? Just move on. I mean, Honestly, it, it doesn't hurt my feelings. Um, I've had one deal that hurt my feelings very, very much. And that was really, that, that was it. Um, but as far as like regular people on the phones rejecting me, it just doesn't, whatever, you know, it, it is what it is. I'm going to find someone. And when you start doing business, it gets easier. So if you're talking to hundred people and you have no deals and you get rejected, it's like, oh, what, you know, what, what am I going to do? I'm like, nobody, nobody even likes me, you know? And then it's, you'll finally get that one, you'll get some momentum and then all that other people, it doesn't matter. So once you get the momentum and you start really going, everything else, all the rejection kind of just, it doesn't matter anymore. Um, and I've always felt like that anyway. So like, that's always been my mindset. I don't care if they hang up on me. None of that matters. Let's just call the next person. Like you said, it's a numbers game. You're going to find someone who connects with you and you're going to go get a deal and you're going to make $10,000 and then you're going to be like, okay, this is great. I can do this again. And then you're going to be like, well, 10 people rejected me before I got this. And now I got $10,000. So now it's just a normal thing to you. You're going to get rejected. So every, every, time get I get a, every time somebody rejects me, it's like I stuck a thousand bucks in my pocket. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a stepping stone to the person who you're going to get. It's like, yeah. okay, well, I need, if I need to get rejected 90 times and let me get that out of the way so I can get that one person who's going to give me $10,000. Right. If you're going to reject me, can we just make this a really quick call? Yeah, exactly. Like I'll, I'll hammer them as long as I can, but if I know they're not interested, it's like, all right, have a great day. I'm yeah. on to the next person. Like I'm not going to spend my time, um, you know, talking to them. So, it, and it just depends on who you're calling to. Like if you're calling old expireds or whatever, I, I, me personally, I've never called expireds or 
fizz bowls. It just was never my thing. Um, a lot of people have success with it, but that just wasn't who I was calling. Wait a second. So you built a very successful business without calling any for sale by owners or expireds? Never once. Well, I take that back. I called the for sale by owner and he told me he wasn't paying a uh, commission to anybody, he, not, even the, not even the buyer's agent. Um, and we had a very interesting talk. And then I said, this is not for me. And I hung up and I just started doing other things. I think I called two or three Fizbos. I met with one. They didn't hire me. I met with another one. I brought my wife pretending like she was a buyer and I never called any more Fizbos. <laughs> and I think I've called, I did buy into calling expireds one full day during bold like 10 years ago and I haven't done it since. You got like, hung up. On I know what work. to say. I know exactly how to work it. I just, that's, I didn't want to build my business that way. I wanted no, to build it a different it, way and I was able to do that. I'm a, and I'm looking into some, doing some other stuff in the community as far as volunteering and that type of stuff. I'm very big on, on connections. Um, face-to-face -face connections, building that, building that with the community, building it with, you know, important people, all that type of stuff. And then that they introduce you to the next person and then they introduce you to the next person. Um, and it just spreads that way. And that's, that's more my thing than being on the phones all day. So yeah. I'd rather be out and about, um, you know, kind of hammering, talking to, I have no problem like talking to people and doing all that stuff. And, you know, you always find a way to bring up real estate. A lot of my friends now, know that I'm crushing it and they love to, you know, they they love to say it, you know, and um, so when they're around their friends, they're like, oh yeah, Jay's crushing it in real estate. You got to talk to him if you ever want to buy a house. And then it's like, oh, well, shit, my, sorry. Oh, darn, my sister's buying. Doing a I whole, heard, doing a whole own. hour is not so bad. No, I've been doing really well. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so it, that's kind of more my style. I'm not saying I don't make any phone calls. I still call like my sphere and I check in, like, like I said today, I have a four o'clock meeting, go out for drinks with a couple past clients who have been great with me, um, you know, and that, just that type of stuff to me is more important because those are the going to, the people that, the people that trust you, the people that care about you are going to be the ones who are going to support your business in five years. So in five, uh, yeah, in five well years, my five year plan is to, is to not have to make any cold calls. If I'm closing 40, 50 deals a year on referrals, life's good. You know, I can do other, I can do other business deals. I can do other investments. I can do other stuff on the side to, you know, build my retirement stuff. And here I am closing, you know, 40 or 50 deals. So I haven't made that decision yet, whether I want to attack something and do be a hundred, hundred and 120 deal agent with a big team, or do I want to do 50 deals and referrals and just kind of, you know, coast through and do other business stuff on the side, as far as like res investing in flips and that type of stuff. So it's so great that, and how many years have you been in the business now? Four? Uh, a little over three. So a little over three, your first year, your first six months, you made nothing. Your first year, you made 20 grand. Your second year, you made 40 grand. And now you just said, I'll do 40 or 50 deals and I'll have plenty of time to do other business things. Yeah. That's a, that's a lot of growth, man. Good for yeah. you. Yeah, it grew pretty quick. Um, my 2019 really put me kind of on the map. And then I took a step back this year just because I knew I would, um, you know, going on your own anytime you do that. I'm still doing very well this year, so I have no complaints. But, um, you know, as far as the numbers I was putting up last year, I'm not putting that same number up this year. But, you know, it's just a residual. So next year, you know, if I can do 150 this year, my next year, you're going to get referrals from the people who you closed. Yeah, exactly you're not building a team for somebody else. You're finally, you know, I'm finally here building my team. Uh, right. And not one, my team, one, but just my business in general. It's very easy in our business um, to compare yourself with other people. Mm. Right. Um, they have a bold law around. It says, don't compare your insides to other people's outsides. Right. Mm. So some people say, um, you know, you know, oh, let's do more deals, more open houses, more time away from the family, less vacations, more listings. Right. And I remember going into my meetings with, uh, with Denise, our team leader, many years ago. I said, I don't want that plan. Show me the, I want to make 200 grand plan as fast as possible, working as little as I can. That's the plan I want to run. Yeah. And she showed me the plan. That's the plan we worked. I probably put in around six to eight months of work a year, made between 150 and 200 like clockwork for six or seven years in a row. 
and had a great life outside of real estate. Mm -hmm. And could I have made more and worked more? Yeah, of course. But that's yeah. not really what I wanted. Yeah. Well, and I, I've, I've always been kind of like this. And I worked, when I was in construction, I worked 60, 70 hours a week, six days a week. I was up at four. In the, I mean, I was 22 years old, waking up at four in the morning and going to work until seven at night and doing that seven days a week. You didn't find many people doing that. And, you know, the, the whole theory was is that I don't want to do that when I'm 45 or 50, um, put in the work. Now, don't get me wrong. I had a lot of fun, um, you know, as a 21, 22, all, my 20, I still have a lot of fun. Um, but work comes first. You know, if everyone's going to the pool on a Saturday and having a pool party and I have a client that wants to go see a house that I can potentially make $10,000, I, it's not even a question to me. I'm going to show that house and skip that party. It doesn't, there's just not a question. So I know a lot of people are like, oh no, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to work. And I'll work seven days a week if the money's there. It doesn't matter to me. Right. Um, and and so, there's, you know, our, there's different things that drive us at different times of our lives. Yeah. Right. Like I, I um, and well, that's, this, like I said, that's my mindset now because I don't want that, you know, when I get a family or you know, settle down, I can't do that anymore. So yeah, I can do that now right. and I can build that, that base and then I can start investing in other places. Well, now I can do 30 deals a year and make 200 grand a year and, have my other stuff going on and still have a really good life. Yeah. Um, Jay, I want to be re respectful of your time. Um, it, does anyone else have any, any other questions for Jay? And I'm good. So if you have any questions, just, I'm not in any hurry. Um, what other, what have you heard today, guys, that um, maybe surprised you or made you feel um, like you're in a good place or made, scared you? Let, let's, Let's be, uh, share your thoughts. What are you, what are you feeling right now? I have a question about the investors. Oh, sorry, you can go, sorry. Go ahead. Heather, you, you're first. Okay, my question was when you're working with these investors, what was the gap between the price they would offer and the price that the house would have sold if it sold on the market? Like how big was that gap? So with us, so I, Actually, right now, so like I don't have investors. I have one investor who I just don't, and I, and I left all my other investors solely because this guy was the main man and I brought everything to him. And if it doesn't work for him, it's not going to work for someone else because he has a construction company that can really get lean. Um, but to answer your question, everything is different. It just depends on the deal. So if you're talking about $150,000 purchase, that's worth, you know, $300,000, but he has to put 80 grand into it, you know, so it, it's all, it's all to him, the money, if he's going to put $200,000 up, he might be okay with making $30,000. If he's going to put a deal in that's going to cost him $350,000, well, he's going to want to make 60, $70,000 on that deal. So it just all depends on his output. Um, and also how many deals does he have out there right now? If he's got, if he already has 40 deals in the works, well, he doesn't need a deal for 20,000, but he'll take one for 60. Um, so if that's kind of what you're getting at, so it's, it's kind of all different with him. He doesn't have like an exact spread on what it is. So if he, it's just all different. If he's going to buy a house for hundred grand, he's okay with making 25,000 because it's an easy deal for him. It's very low risk. It's not really eating up much of his capital. We're going to sell the house in two seconds. Um, if he's going to buy a house for 300,000 and put a hundred thousand in it and we're going to sell it for five, then he's going to want a hundred thousand dollar profit on it. So, okay. yeah. Thank you. So it's, it's tough with my guy to give you any sort of, most people are going to look for like somewhere in the range of like 30%. And your guy sounds like he'd, he'd be willing to take less if it's easy or something unusual. If, if it's easier, if it's easier, he'll take less. If it's a lower, lower deal, he'll take less. I had a great deal for him right in Midtown um, and it was, I mean, it was a killer deal, but it was going to cost, it was going to tie up, you know, $500,000 of his business. And it was in a place where you had to get so many permits and, you know, follow all these re restrictions and it would have been a nine month deal. He would have made 150,000 on it, but he was just like, I can't, I'm not tying up. You know, I can do, I can do five $250,000 deals and make that money in this, less amount of time and take, not take a bunch of risk on one property. So, yeah. so yeah, he's, 
and some investors, every investor is different. And that's the conversation you need to have with them. Um, what is your spread? What are you looking to make on a property? Um, that's right, if they're like, oh, uh, well, I was hoping you could maybe help me with that. Uh, yeah, cool. okay, well then if you wanna make, then we'll make 15 grand, are you okay with that? I can find you a house that can make you 15,000 on. We can find those all day long. So yeah, that's a question you need to ask your investor. If they don't know that, then it's a, it's a red flag because most investors should know, hey, we want to make this profit margin. Uh, we, and a lot of times investors, my guy doesn't care if it's $150,000 renovation. He's not scared of that because that's what they do for a living. Uh, a question for an investor is, you know, how much are you looking, like how big of a rehab are you looking? Well, we don't want to put more than 25,000 in it. Well, then if you look at a house, like I can look at a house online and say, this has, you know, at least $60,000, $70,000 worth of work to it. So I'm not even going to go there. I wouldn't even show them that property. So like, those are the questions to vet your investors. You know, what are you looking for on profit? You know, what price point do you want to spend and what price point do you want to end? Um, and how much work do you want to do there? So those are some good questions to ask your investor to kind of vet them out and see you know, does it make sense? And if they ask you, if they say, we want to buy a house for 150 grand and we want to make, you know, a hundred thousand. That's, that's just, okay. So do I, it, it's not happening, <laughs> you know? So you can kind of tell them that and you can be honest with them. Like, Hey, look, those aren't out there right now. Like you can't spend a hundred grand and to make hundred, you're not going to double your money on an investment like that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, John, I think you had a question too, oh. right? Donna's, Donna's comment really hit it on the head for me. And first of all, Jay, thank you very much for your time and your insight. Really appreciate it. Her comment really hit it on the head that uh, we're going to find out what works for us, uh, what everybody else is doing and being successful with may not work for us. We'll eventually find our niche and just to adopt a more longer term uh, strategy. I'm yeah. very, in the corporate world, a more immediate impact of my actions. I'm not used to this now, but you know, just, just, just to adopt a longer term. And that, and that for me is, uh, you know, you know, that's my biggest takeaway. Yeah. And I, and I think that's, I think that's very big because you'll get a lot of people who will tell you, you need to do this, this, and this. Well, if it doesn't work for you, don't do that. Right, um, right. And you can try, I'd say try everything, right? So go try to door knock. Do I hate door knocking. Was I good at it? I mean, yeah, I thought so, but I wasn't getting anything from it. So I was like, okay, I'm out. I'm done. I don't like to do it. So I didn't have a passion for it. So it was eventually you're going to scratch off all those things and you're going to find that core of exactly. You find a couple because I mean, Bill will tell you, you can, there's 15 different ways to lead gen. Right. You, you, you don't want to, you don't want to do them all because right. you can't, you can't do them all. And you, and you um, don't want to be substandard at 15 different things. No, excellent at three of them. And yeah, exactly. Just you're, lock you're not, solid system, follow up the whole deal. Yeah. I mean, what's what, interesting, I, I would just caution you to say, like, don't go out on like one, you know, one two hour period of door knocking yeah. and then tell me it's not. That's it. That's like, no, yeah, don't, give it a, don't call three FISBOs and be like, they were mean. I'm not doing FISBOs. Right. Like, you got to give it a little bit sure. of just, time. Understand. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Push do your things, push it. And you're going to find what works for you, what works for your personality. For me in real estate, it was always my personality. I wanted to be me and do the things the way I wanted to do it. And if it worked, then great. And if it didn't, then I would need to find a way to switch it up, but it's working for me and I'm enjoying it and I'm not going to change it. I will add some stuff. I mean, there's that I'm not, I'm not at 100% capacity by any means. There's so much stuff I can do. Um, there's a lot of things that I can add in that Bill will tell you guys to to go ahead and do. Um, I'm I'm starting to place those things. Um, I got a little lackadaisical during COVID. I was still making money and things were coming in. It was actually kind of easy because they were all referrals and you get a little bit comfortable and but those disappear. Uh, I have still a lot of referrals in the pipeline, which are nice, but I don't want to. I need to start doing the other things that I had planned before COVID now, because once your pipeline, Tries you know, it. once my pipeline dies and my referrals that I have in the pipe, then here I am scrambling. So I'd rather start that now, get that in place, start getting my, my leads and getting my referrals for, you know, January, February uh, at this time. So, but yeah, that's a, and it's I'm good glad to you got that, that takeaway. 
And it's good to know that I'm not the only one who's, who's not making any money at this in the beginning. So she's definitely yeah. inspiring that, you know, we can definitely make, make something of this. Cool. Yeah, and that's why I like to share my story because a lot of times everyone, you know, and I don't want to be a downer, but, you know, everyone hears the success stories and that's what, that's what drives you and that's what does it. But at the end of the day, you want to know what the reality of it is also because if you're hearing the success story and then you're not having the success, well, now you're like, well, why, why is this guy doing it? And I'm not, but now you can hear from a guy who was in your position who continued to follow the program and continue to push and push and push and push and find ways to figure it out. And now all of a sudden you're making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, so it's good to continue to, to keep moving forward and just follow the program, keep calling, keep doing your thing, find your niche. You know, this is the time to do it. Um, mm -hmm you know, follow what Bill says to do. If you're in the productivity coaching, kind of go that route and, you know, you're going to find something that works for you. And then all of a sudden it's going to click, or you're going to find a team that really works for you. And that's going to click. And all of a sudden, here you go, you're off to the races and you're feeling good. Yeah. I, I think that it's such a good point that it, it is simply like, we don't bring anyone on here that is a failure story, right? Um, at least we don't bring anyone on here that failed and then didn't keep trying and ultimately succeeded, right? All mm -hmm. of us that have had success, we all had some stumbling blocks and uh, a, a, a bad year or a bad quarter or a bad couple of years. Like we've all just hung in the fight and keep doing the same thing. I mean, my first year I had sold one home I said, and two homes. One was to myself. Um, you know, the, the next year I sold 14 homes, right? So it just, it happened because every day I went out and farmed the field. Yeah. And I'd be lying to you if I didn't, after six months, ask myself, I mean, I left a job making $150,000 a year and I'm sure you leave in the corporate world, you were doing pretty well. And uh, you come here and then all of a sudden it's, you know, you're living in Atlanta and by yourself and it's not very cheap and you're burning through your, your bank account that you worked 10 years for. Um, it gets scary, you know, and it's like, what did I do? I'm here and I'm here in Atlanta I didn't even, I can't, I, didn't, I can't even call a friend over because I don't know who they are. And they're telling me to call all my friends to sell real estate to, um, you know? So it's like, well, what do I, what do I do here? You know, I'm sitting in all these lead gen classes and they're like, okay, we're going to call your sphere. And I'm like, well, okay. So I'm going to call my cousin from Michigan and see if he wants to buy a house in Atlanta. No thing. Yeah. Um, you know, and, 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 and I get it. They'll tell you, well, they may know somebody and Bill's probably going to slap me for that because he's going to tell you to do that one day. And, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be like, it, you know, it just wasn't, it just wasn't for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, uh, I'd be lying if I told you that I didn't think about getting, you know, I was getting phone calls from people in the industry, in the construction industry, like, Hey, we're moving down to Corpus Christi. Here's $150,000 salary. Come on back. And it's like, it's like, yeah. it's like, Oh boy, do I, you know, do I do this? And I've just never been the type. I've always had confidence in myself. Um, when you start running out of money, you start losing a little confidence, but then it really boosts you back up. And um, so, yeah, I stuck with it and, you know, it's the best thing I ever did. So awesome. awesome Jay. I love that, Jay. I'm not mad at you, man. You look, I um, I've said many times in this room, if you're not thinking about leaving this business once a month, you're not talking to enough people. Yeah. Okay. You it's flat out like this is a stressful business. Okay. Absolutely. Let's, let's just, let's have a reality check here. And this is no judgment for anybody, but I felt personally like making 30 or $40,000 a year to put up with what we have to put up with is not in alignment. No. Right. If I only wanted 40, I was going to go get a job where I didn't have to deal with upset people. Right. If we want more than that, then we have, there's more responsibility that goes along with it. Yeah. And if you really look at it, I mean, you're, you're talking $50,000 a year. I know it seems a long ways away right now because you guys are new agents, but it's easy to do. Once you do it, it's going to be very, you're going to, you're going to just be like, God, that was easy. I mean, you're talking, you do $300,000, how many thousand, $300,000 deals, five, and you make 50 grand. I mean, five deals a year. Think about it. It's not that hard when you really break it down. Um, you can do that very easily. And then there you are making 50 grand, you're at least living. Right. And, and then you can keep on going off of that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, you know, it, talking money, like 
I didn't make, what did I say? I made 40 grand, 30 grand my second year. In June and July, 2019, I made 32,000 in June and I made 34,000 in, in July. So I made more in two months than I did my previous year. Um, and that if, really- if you, haven't, if you haven't seen Jay driving around Roswell, um, that, that's like with the, with the car door cost of his yeah. new ride. Yeah, I just bought a new car and it's very nice. And Bill set the alarm off yesterday. So. Yeah, I walked a little too close to it. I was trying to figure out whose car it was. I'm like, man, that's a nice car. It set the alarm off. Yeah. So, I mean, it's uh, things can change so quickly. It really can. Like, yeah, all it takes is one one good connection. All of a sudden, you start getting there. I mean, you know, you could you could run into someone who wants to sell a nine hundred thousand dollar house, and there you are at a twenty seven thousand dollar commission, and then you're in the game. You know what I mean? You got enough money to kind of float. You got enough money to take a little risk. Um, and, and that's just how it works. So, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't give up. You just keep on moving forward. Well, let's end it on that. Um, Jay, thank you. Thank you so much for, um, uh, for your time today and your extra time today. Um, thanks for your willingness to, to pop into a session like this that uh, you, you probably have not done a whole lot of. I'm very grateful to, uh, to have- Yeah, this is not my, th not my thing. Well, you were natural, my friend. So thank you. <laughs> I, didn't, yeah. um, I hope this was helpful for, for everyone in the group. Um, if you have uh, any, any follow-up questions for, for Jay, of course, I can um, introduce the two of you. And um, you know, Jay is uh, just one more example of somebody who came in and they basically, you know, I, as I say, I kind of joke around. They, they walk up to, the, to Mel or to Mike or to me or whoever and say, hey, we're all the people making money, having fun. Mm -hmm. And you see what the model and the system is to make money and have fun, and then you just go implement it. And um, you know, we're planting seeds. It's not all going to happen tomorrow, but you, it will happen, right? These are tried and true strategies. These are tried and true scripts, right? Um, Jay's a smart guy, but he's not having success because he's a smart guy. He's having success because he's a hard worker. Yeah, I'm more of a hard worker than a smart guy. <laughs> I, I meant that with love, by the way. Yeah, I know you did. I'm saying I'm more of a hard worker than a smart guy. <laughs> In a nice one. All In right. Nice. Thank you so much, Jay. Yeah. And if any guys ever, I mean, honestly, I help a lot of different agents. So if you guys ever have any questions, I mean, you can con you can call Bill and get my number. And yeah. I mean, any contract questions, any of that type of stuff, I, it doesn't bother me to get phone calls from you guys. So feel free to reach out because I know when I was a new agent and I was searching for people to call at nine o'clock at night because I was writing a contract and I don't mind that. So open up the line and feel free to call. Much appreciated. You, you, yeah. you did great today. Maybe we'll invite you back soon, Jay. Thanks. Oh yeah, I'm looking forward. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a two minute break and I'll hit the stop on the recorder.